Hi, I'm Kirsty, the baker turned website designer who runs Bake This Happen, which offers website design and templates for bakeries and home baking businesses. Today it's a tech video, so we're going to be looking at how you would add a contact form or an inquiry form to your website. So we'll look at how you would actually add that form to your Squarespace website, how you would add the block, how you should build out the page, and also what information you should have on the page aside from the actual contact form. Then we'll take a look at what kind of questions you should be asking people within that form to really help save your time and their time by getting the information you need to either put together a quote or to just follow through with the order and then follow up with an invoice, etc. So let's dive in to the website and take a look at adding our contact form. The most important page on your website is going to be the order page, the all important place where people can place an order or make an inquiry. So it's brilliant if it's really easy for people to find on every single page. And then when they click through, the steps are really easy for them to follow. So you set their expectations, let them know how long it will take for you to get back to them, and then make sure you've got all of the information you need at this stage to either process their order or maybe create a quote for them to follow up with. So we are going to go ahead and build our own contact page and add our contact form. What you'll do is head to pages and then we'll start under not linked and we will use the plus icon to create a blank page. So we will call this contact, but you can call it order or whatever is going to work best for your business. Then we'll select this edit button in the top corner to open up the page editor and we are going to add a section. So I just prefer to add a blank section so we can kind of work our way through the whole process. In this top section, you can add a kind of heading if you would like. So we can say something like place your order here. And then I would set this as a heading. You can style this up however you would like to match your existing website, the rest of your branding. Um, but we will center that up and then we can change the color by selecting this pencil icon, heading to colors, and then picking one of your colors from your palette. So let's just go with this peachy orange. So we'll add a new section, which can be our actual form section. We'll go for blank again. And so the first thing we'll do is give people some information about how they should be getting in touch with you, what their, um, what your time skill is for getting back to them. So you know, say, please get in touch to place your order inquiry. I will follow up within 48 hours with a quote and a deposit invoice or whatever kind of process is going to work with your bakery. Next, we want to add the all important form. So we are looking for one of these plus icons and that's going to bring up our blocks that we can uh, work with. And we are looking for the one called form. So we can give this form a name. You can drag this box into an easier spot for yourself just by clicking anywhere on the top there and dragging it up. So do give the form a name. This is the name that will come in as the subject line in your email inbox. So it's helpful, helpful for you to know exactly what that is. So we will call it website order form. Button text is going to be the text that appears here. So submit is absolutely fine, but it could be something more specific like place inquiry. Then we have edit form fields. So these are the fields that appear by default. Name is going to be perfect. Email is definitely what you're going to want. I would edit subject and message. So first we'll click edit and we'll just delete these. And then we'll select done. And then we're going to start adding our own fields. So you might want your customer's phone number so you can follow up with um, by phone. So you can add that. 
You may also want to ask them when they want their order for. So if you select date, there's just one thing to watch out for. You'll see here it comes in with date, month, day, year. So that's perfect for everybody who lives in the United States. If you live in the UK, like I do, I prefer to just say add field and then add a text line and then go into edit this text and just say what date do you need your order by and then people can add in a date in the UK format which is date month year. If you definitely need to know any of these questions before your customer can sort of place their, their inquiry make sure to check this required box. That will add that little asterisk there and it will mean that nobody can submit this form without answering that question. So we can go back into edit and just delete whichever of these we decide we don't want to use. It, oops, go back into edit form fields. And then we can add a field to ask what it is exactly that they're ordering. So if you've got a kind of the type of setup where people can order multiple things, I would recommend adding a checkbox. That will allow people to select a few of these options at once. If you want people to only order kind of one thing at a time, I would recommend adding a radio. So you can see it's really sim similar, uh, but the difference is they could only select one or one of these options. So we edit these both in the exact same way. We click through. First, we want to edit the label. So that's going to be what would you like to order? You can add a description in here. So uh, what bakes would you like? But you can give people more information about how they should kind of answer this question. Then under options, this is where you would add your different products or, um, or flavors, whatever it may be. I'll just add a couple in here to give you an idea. And you can see this form auto updates as we're working on it. So we can make this one required. And then lastly, you might want to add a text box. So a larger area of text, which is called text area to give them a chance to give you any extra information. So uh, please share what design you would like. And again, you can let people know how they should answer this question. So um, maybe ask them to give you links to inspiration or color schemes. Uh, but of course, this is so specific to whichever products your bakery sells. So just make sure you're covering yourself and getting the information you need at this stage. So we'll just get rid of this check box by clicking edit again and then removing and then done. So that is our form. The next couple of things to edit here are going to be post submit. So this option message is just what people are going to see once they press submit. So you can leave us thank you, or you can add a bit of extra text in here just saying, I'll get back to you within 48 hours. I can't wait to bake your cake or something. I can't wait to bake your cake. You can also choose redirect where you would add in a link. So maybe after people have submitted this form, you just want to send them back to the homepage. If you hit the backslash on your on your keyboard, you'll see all of the pages on your website. So you could select home. And once somebody submitted this, it will take them straight back to the home page. Design is just going to give you a couple of options for the design of this. So you can center the button, have it right aligned. Lightbox will turn this form into a button. So somebody would click that button and then the form would pop up. Um, and you can just turn that off again and the form will be visible. Storage is really important. Under email, this is where you're going to want to make sure your email address is, uh, has been added to make sure whenever somebody submits this form, it is sent to your email address. And do test it once you've gone through this process to make sure those emails are coming through to you. 
So that's really us. We can do a little bit of styling here. We can have these, uh, this text and this form side by side. To do that, we would select the form box, drag it all the way over to the right until you see this thick blue line and then let go. Then you can change the spacing between, or the proportions I should say, between each of these blocks. We could also make this overall section a bit narrower. If we click this pencil icon under content width, we could just make that medium and it just kind of pulls things in and makes it a bit neater. And we've got a little space there. The last thing you might want to add here are links to your social media. So we can do that by clicking this plus icon and then looking for social links. So we can scroll down till we find it or we can just start typing social links and that will add in the social media links that you've already added to your website. So once you're happy with your contact page, don't forget to come up to this top corner and select save. And then what you can do is add this page to your menu just by clicking and dragging. And it will then appear within your top menu. Now, whilst we're here, you might wonder how you could set that page to be this button rather than just a page within the menu. So I will show you how to do that. We'll pull this back down into not linked because we don't want it in the main menu. We want it as a button. We'll then go back into the page editor. This time we're going to edit the site header. And then this option elements is going to give us this button option at the top here. So if we click that, that button's going to disappear. So if you don't see it, it's probably because you've got that turned off. So if we click that, turn it back on, we can change the wording here. So we could change that just to contact. And then we just want to select our page from this section. So again, if we use the backslash, just one, it will bring up all of the pages on our website. So we can select contact, and that's that, so we can just select back and finally save. So I hope you are able to add this contact form to your website and I hope it's really helpful for streamlining your order process within your bakery. If you've got any questions about this process, please drop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help.